Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Pastor Mike's Quick Shots. I hope that you are having a good week. I hope that uh, I hope that resurrection and living a new life is treating you well. That you are beginning to learn what it means to 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 live in light of an empty tomb. I know that the one of the things that I always find difficult is what's happening to me whatever it might be it might be just a bad day it might be a flat tire it might be something even worse it could be really bad news i know that our oldest son cody came into contact with a person uh, who tested positive for covid um, just on the first day of school and so he has to quarantine now for 10 days 14 days whatever it is and so i know that in his world, everything's changed and everything's wrong and he can't physically uh, join us at dinner and, and things of that nature. Uh, we are trying our best to make sure that we stay in contact, <laughs> even though he's excluded from us. But I can only imagine that feeling of alone, being left out, having to try to find new ways to, to do school and to do work and to do all the things that he needs to get done. I know that it doesn't feel like it at times, but no matter what we're facing, it's not the end. It can be bad, it can be dark, it can be horrible, but it's not the end. We were never meant to live and enjoy this life. And I had uh, someone had, had come up to me and asked me a question, uh, whether or not that this was true. And I said, well, what, what's true? Well, they say they, they don't know what grave Jesus was buried in. And I said, you're right, because there's no bones to verify that that's his grave. No one marked it with any special markings because it was a borrowed grave. And so it, there's not a way to, to identify that grave as the grave. Now, there's if you go to the Holy Land, I'm sure there's several options for you, but I don't know that, uh, I don't know that any of them are legit. And this is something that the disciples battled after they were, uh, blessed with the Holy Spirit and, and went out to start talking about this Jesus, this guy that they knew, this guy that they saw after he was dead, uh, the many, many people that saw him after he was confirmed dead. Paul writes this about the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15. Take a listen. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 16 through 19. And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. I don't, I don't often make things up, but I say them in different ways. And so when I tell you uh, in, a, in a sermon or in a message or when we're having a conversations together that, that you need to stop worrying about this world, you need to stop focusing in on this world and its problems. Our hope is in Christ. Our hope is in a resurrection. And if, and if we are lying, then we're all going to just die anyway. But if we're telling the truth, if there's a, a semblance of chance that th more than 3,000 years worth of people believing in this triune God are right, then I think I'm going to take that chance because I don't want to be pitied by the world because I'm only using Christ to have hope in this life. Christ wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to have this life, but he does not want you to put hope in it. He wants your hope to be in him. What happens when Jesus explains this himself? What does it look like? He says this to his, to his disciples in John 14, 19. Jesus says, soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Listen to these words. Since I live, you also will live. Jesus is confirming what they already knew later to be true. He was telling them this ahead of time. He's telling us now ahead of time. 
that because he lives, we will also live. Because that grave is empty, we have a chance to be resurrected ourselves. The, this resurrection thing is real. It's legitimate. We go to the book of Luke for some additional answers. Now, when we read Sunday, we read from the book of John, this, this story at the tomb, right? And if you go to Luke 24, you can read the longer version of it. But in, in, in verse 6, the, the women are there and they are greeted with angels who are telling them what has happened. And in verse 6, the angels say to the women looking for Jesus' body, He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee. Literally, there are, are women at the graveside for Mary Magdalene, I'm, sure, I'm assuming is one of them. They are, they are coming to prepare Jesus' body for permanent burial, and he's not there. He's not there, and the angels have to come and remind them that Jesus already told you that he was going to rise from the grave. This is not new information, but we, just like those women, we are forgetting about our nature, our truth, what we know to be true, what we can feel in our souls to be true, and that is Jesus is alive, he is not dead, and therefore I can be alive and not dead. It's a choice. We have a choice to make every day. And friends, I pray that you are making that choice today. That whatever your day is bringing you, whatever your day is, is presenting to you, whatever this week so far has brought you to, my prayer is that you will overcome, not on your own strength, not on your own choices and your own decisions that you might boast, but that you might have hope in Jesus Christ, that his love for you endures all things. He has given up himself that you might experience eternity. And that everything you see around you, everything you see is meant to burn. It's meant to be destroyed and it's meant to go away because there's a new heaven and a new earth that's coming. That's what you're made for. You are made for eternity. Don't sell yourself short by saying today's hardships is all I got because you don't. You've got an eternity to look forward to. Friends, I pray that you have a great rest of your week, that you are super excited about getting out there and facing the future unafraid. No matter what tomorrow brings, you are a child of God and he loves you. Friends, I hope you join us Sunday morning, 9 a.m. at Maplewood and 10.30 a.m. in DeGraff. Anybody's welcome to come. We are wearing masks, at least most of us. It's not a, it's not a force. It's not a law. It's just kindness. And uh, just pray that you guys are staying healthy and safe. I love you very much. And I pray that you have a good week. Bye-bye, everybody.